Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'll be going over the candlesticks package for R, which is a candlestick pattern recognition package. So if you go to this link, it'll take you to the documentation. And in the documentation, we can search for any of these patterns within our stock data. And I'm gonna take one of these examples and show you the probabilities and returns for one of these patterns. Let's take a look at our script. If you wanna install this package, you will run line two. We're gonna start off by reading some stock data. In this tutorial, I'm gonna use the SPY, so I'm gonna assign that to stock. Now what's really neat about this package is that all you really need is your open, high, low, close. And then we pass that data into these wrappers. It will automatically detect the candlestick patterns. Let's start off by extracting doji candlesticks. So I'm gonna run line nine. We're gonna take a look at what it returned. So within the doji, we have three different types, doji, dragonfly doji, and gravestone doji. What the function is doing is going through each bar and it will return true if it detects that the candlestick falls within one of these patterns. And we can easily extract those for only the true cases. So here in our script, we're gonna extract all the cases where we have dojis since 2020. So let's take a look at that chart. So I've found quite a few since 2020. The next thing I wanted to add was the previous candle and the next candle. Since this pattern kind of represents a reversal, I wanted to take a look at those two extra bars. Now, if you want to add those here in the script, all we have to change is to change the case in the previous candle and the next candle. So we're going to take a look at this dark cloud cover. I'm going to run line 18 to extract all those cases. So if we run that, we take a look at DCC. We're gonna use this XTS object to extract all the true cases. So here within our script, I'm gonna go ahead and plot these to see what they look like. For this to be a dark cloud cover, we have to take a look at the previous bar. So here in our script, we're gonna extract all the locations where the function detected a dark cloud cover. So I'm gonna extract those locations. Now I'm gonna pass that into dark cloud cover and I'm gonna set the previous bar and the next bar to true. So let's run these two lines. Now, since the previous bar and the next bar is set to true, we should now see these bars when we plot it. So I'm gonna run line 26. We'll take a look at the plot. All right, so now we have groups of three and we do see in fact that it was accurate in detecting this candlestick pattern. Now that we can add the previous bar and the next bar, we can calculate the accuracy for reversals in this case. So in our script, I'm gonna use a different pattern. I'm gonna use the hammer. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract those cases. I will then extract the locations of where we detected hammer patterns by running line 33. And just as before, I'm gonna set the previous bar and the next bar equal to true. And we will go ahead and plot it as well. So let's run that and take a look at the plot. All right, for the most part, we should see groups of three where the middle candlestick is the hammer pattern. Now I'm gonna build a function to detect whether this is trending down or if it's trending up to check the accuracy for reversals. So here in our script, I'm gonna use L apply and pass in all the locations where it detected the pattern. So if we open this up, by using the location, I can extract the previous candle, the signal candle, or the pattern candle, and the next candle. So I'll go ahead and extract the prices. I'm gonna calculate both returns on the long side and the short side. And in the next couple of lines, I'm detecting whether the stock is trending up or if it's trending down by comparing the previous candle to the signal candle. So if the previous candle is less than our signal candle and the signal candle is greater than the next candle, then this should be a bearish reversal. The direction would be negative one. And in this case, since we are expecting the stock to come down, I will return the bear return. And that just means that we're shorting. On the opposite side, if the previous candle is greater than the signal candle, and also the signal candle is less than the next candle, that means that the outcome is a bullish reversal. The direction is one. And I'm returning the bullish return since we are expecting the stock to move up. Now it could be the case where we have a continuation. So we have to take those into account. So if the previous candle is less than the signal candle, and also the signal candle is less than the next candle that means that the stock price continued to move up the outcome was a bullish continuation the direction was one and in this case i'm returning the bear return as we were expecting a pullback but instead the stock rose in the next bar similarly if we have a bearish continuation the previous candle is greater than the signal candle and also the signal candle is greater than the next candle so the outcome would be a bearish continuation the direction would be negative one and since we had expected a bullish scenario but instead we got 
got a further move down, I'm gonna return the bullish return. So in these last two cases, these would be classified as false positives and the candlestick itself was not a good indicator of the expected outcome. So we're gonna test all the candlesticks it detected. We're gonna return everything as a data frame, which includes the date, the prices for the previous candle, the signal candle and the next candle, what the outcome was, the direction and also the return. Here I'm just modifying the column name. And after we do that, just return that data frame. So if we minimize this and we run it, we'll take a look at BT. So we have our date, the previous candle, the signal candle, and the next candle. And these are all the closing prices, the outcomes, the direction, and the return. We're gonna group these by outcome. So here in our script, I'm going to extract all four cases. Now that I have these separated, I'm gonna calculate the number of rows and divide that by the total number of rows in BT, which will give us the percentage of each case. So if we run stats, modify the column names, we'll take a look at stats. So for SPY, 24% of the cases were bullish reversals. We have 28% of a bullish continuation, 37% of bear reversals, and close to 10% for bearish continuations. If we group the bear reversals and bull reversals, we get total reversals as a percentage, which are pretty good odds, I would say. So 62% of the time, we should expect that these hammers will indeed return a reversal, whereas 38% of the cases will involve a continuation which is the sum of bear continuation and bull continuation. The percentages of the bullish cases, so this is just the sum of these two bull instances. And if we add both of these instances, we get our bearish percentage, which for SPY was a total of 47%. So even though the overall trend for the SPY since 2007 has been trending up, it's good to see that we get close to a 50% chance of each case. Now let's add the return for each of these cases. So back in our script, I'm gonna extract the average return for each of these cases. So if we run that, modify the column names, and I'm gonna row bind stats and rets so that we can have these grouped. All right, so for our bullish reversals, on average, the next candle was approximately 1%. Same for the bearish reversals. For the continuations, we lost an average of close to 1% on the bullish cases, whereas in the bearish continuations, on average, we lost 38 basis points. The average return for both the bullish reversals and the bearish reversals was close to 1%, and the average for continuations was negative 66 basis points, and the average return for all the bullish cases was close to zero, whereas the average for all the bearish cases was closer to 1%. So you can play around with different candlestick patterns for different stocks, and you can extract the probabilities and average returns well guys this concludes the video i hope this was useful information i'll leave a link down in the description area to my patreon where you can find the script please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video